a guy named Frederick Nietzsche. Now this guy, I don't know if you all have ever heard of him, but this man, he wanted a few things in his life, and this was one of the things right up here on the board I'm going to be, if you look at the red, I'm going to be making red letters with a black paintbrush. Now watch this. If you see what the word is, shout it out. That's right. The word is freedom. Now you see, Nietzsche, he wanted freedom, but he wanted freedom from a specific person. Now when I write this name up here on the board, a lot of people walk away. They don't want to hear about this person, but this person is this right here. You see, Nietzsche, he wanted freedom from God. You see, he didn't believe in God, and he said, he thought that, you know, if we erased God as our foundation for everything that we have, that the world would become so much greater. He thought that God and religion were keeping us from being as good as we could actually be. But you know, he didn't just want freedom from God, he also wanted this. Y'all see the word, shout it out. Control. That's right, you see, he wanted control. He didn't want to have God be over him. He didn't want to have uh, God have control of his life. He wanted to have control. He wanted to be this right here. Y'all see what this word says? What's that say? Master. That's right, he wanted to be the master of his life. He didn't want God to have control. He wanted to be the master. He wanted to be over his whole his own life because he thought that God and religion were keeping us, keeping humanity from being as good as we could be. He thought that if we erased God as the foundation, then what would happen is we would become like God. We would take his place. You know what the Bible talks about this? It says in the Bible that you are to have no other gods before me. Now you see, that is called idolatry, and that's what he was. He thought of himself as God. He wanted to be God. He didn't want to have God over him. He wanted to be the master of his own life. But the Bible says that if we do that, if we try and make ourselves God, if we have other things as God before the one true God, that that's this right here. What's that say? Sin. That's right, it says sin. And you know what? But so many times, you know, in the world today, people, they want freedom from God. They don't want to have to live under God. They want to have control of their life. They don't want, they want to be the master. They pretty much want to be their own God. They want to be over their life. They want to have control. They don't want to let God have control or, you know, help them out. They want to reject God. But you know what? When things start going wrong, what do they do? Right. They blame someone. You see, someone always has to take the blame. You can't. When when things are going wrong, you don't want to take it. You don't want to take the blame on yourself. You blame someone else. You know, it's so many times the same people who reject God blame him for the things that are going wrong. But you know what? God has warned us about the things that we do. When we try to reject him, when we want to be our own master, when we want to have control and we don't let God have control. You know what? God isn't the one to blame. You see, God has warned us against these things. When we commit sin, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it says that the wages or the payment for our sin is death. You see, we all have sinned in our lives. And God has warned us that if we continue living in our sin, then we're gonna have to pay the penalty for that sin. And the Bible says that there's one place that you can go. When you, uh, if you don't have forgiveness for your sin, and that's this. What's that say? That's right, the Bible says that if you don't, if you live in your sin, if you continue to live in your sin, that the only place you can go is spend an eternity in hell, away from God, a place of a torment, eternal torment and torture. But. You see, we, uh, we all blame God even though we're just reaping what we're sowing. When we continue to sin, we're the ones that are bringing this. When people say, oh, well, why would a just God allow 
pain and death and suffering in the world. Well, you know what? When God made the world, there was none of that. We're the ones who brought the sin. In fact, It says, we are to blame. You see, we are the ones who have brought the sin in this world. We're the ones who have committed the sin and brought death into the world. You see, it's because of us, because of what we've done that we have this. So we try to blame God, but we're the ones to blame. We're the ones who deserve this. But you know what? The Bible says this. You see, we can either have an eternity of separation from God or we can have this. You see, God loves us still even though we try to wait even though we reject him even though we we go away and we try and live our lives not for him we want to live for ourselves selfishly god still is ready to give us this right here that's right he's willing to give us grace he's willing to give us this he's willing to give us mercy and he's willing to give us this right here. Game show! Game show! That's right, he's willing to give us forgiveness for our sin. But it's only the one thing you see. Jesus sent, God sent a way for us to have forgiveness. He sent his son Jesus Christ down to earth. And he lived a perfect, sinless life. He came down to this earth. And he was nailed to the cross for our sins. You see, Jesus didn't deserve to have to pay the penalty for our sin. He didn't deserve to have to die. But he came, he was nailed to the cross, and he shed his blood on the cross. Because it says in the Bible that there's no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. God sent his son to die on the cross for us. But you know what? Three days later, after being buried in the tomb, he did this. He rose from the grave, defeating sin and conquering death on the cross. And it says in the Bible that if we trust in that, if we trust in Jesus, if we turn from our own way, then he'll give us grace. He'll give us mercy and he'll give us forgiveness. But you know what? The guy that I was talking about at the beginning, Frederick Nietzsche, you know what? He tried to live his life being his own master. He tried to live his life being in control and having freedom because he thought if he rejected God, then he would be happy. But you know what? He died the most miserable person. He died alone. And you know what? All those things that he thought would bring him happiness didn't. It only caused chaos and destruction in his own life. And that's what will happen if we don't trust in Jesus. But if we do, then we can have forgiveness. We can have eternal life with God in heaven. If there's anybody here that would like to learn more about what I was talking about, I have these booklets here that tell more about what I was talking about. Is there anybody here who would like one?